On this day in 1966, Celtic beat FC Zurich in Switzerland to complete their first step to Lisbon. Celtic travelled to Switzerland in October 1966 with a 2-0 lead from the first leg on the 28th of September through goals from Tommy Gemmell and Joe McBride. They flew into a heatwave in Zurich with Ger Henderson writing in the Evening Times of the 4th of October 1966. The Celtic party of 17 players got a pleasant surprise when they awoke this morning. Instead of the cold atmosphere of Glasgow, the sun was beating down so fiercely that the players had their breakfasts on the balconies of their rooms and they ate, gazing down to the blue Zurich Lake and the red roofs of the city itself. Things were not quite so pleasant and comfortable when they moved out to the Zurich Stadium to put in what was supposed to be a quiet morning's training. In a blazing 27 degrees, the players were ordered to stay in the shade to avoid heat exhaustion that afternoon. The conditions also affected Celtic's team selection. The temperature would be a lot cooler for the 8.15pm kickoff, but the dry, hot weather meant the pitch would be firm and ideal for speed merchants Bobby Lennox and Steve Chalmers to exploit on the break. Jock Steen told the Evening Times of the 5th of October, I rarely play Chalmers and Lennox in the same team. Their styles are very similar. They are both experts at racing through the middle and scoring goals. In Scotland, it frequently does not pay to have two players who are almost identical in their approach to the game. Tonight, however, it is different. We are leading by two goals, and although we will be attacking, we will also be giving a great deal of attention to defence. This time, Zurich just cannot play the kind of game they adopted in Glasgow. They have to come to us, and they have to open out. They will have to attack constantly, and I cannot think of better men to exploit the gap that will be left than Chalmers and Lennox. For the first time that season, top scorer Joe McBride did not start, and on what was Jockstein's 44th birthday, Celtic lined up Simpson, Gemmell, O'Neill, Murdoch, McNeil, Clark, Johnston, Lennox, Chalmers, Ald, Hughes. Playing to Steen's game plan, Celtic soaked up the expected Zurich pressure for the first 15 minutes, although the Swiss champions were suffering from such a lengthy injury list, their coach, the legendary Hungarian forward Laszlo Kubala, had selected himself at the age of 41. John Rafferty reported in The Scotsman of the 6th of October 1966, Celtic went into the game with no reckless bravado. Coolly, they contained the excited opening rushes of Zurich, when they had blunted the Swiss enthusiasm, tamed their speed and dampened their spirit, Celtic went to work on them and made them look what they are, semi-professionals. That is professionalism. After that opening spell, Murdoch and Ald soon established control of midfield, Rafferty writing, In Murdoch and Ald, they had great midfield players. The poise and cleverness of Ald was astonishing to those who remember him in his earlier, more turbulent days. Jimmy Johnston had the ball in the net after a Bobby Lennox shot rebounded off the post on 16 minutes, but the referee disallowed it for offside against Steve Chalmers. It only delayed the inevitable, and it was Tommy Gemmell who opened the scoring six minutes later. The Glasgow Herald reported on the 6th of October 1966, The Celtic players then found huge open spaces in the Zurich defence, and after 22 minutes, Gemmell, picking up a loose ball on the halfway line, ran forward and, with a shot of tremendous power from 30 yards, put Celtic 1-0 in the lead on the night and 3-0 up over the tie. The Zurich players wilted perceptibly. Lennox and Chalmers both had shots cleared off the line before the tie was completely killed off five minutes from the interval. Rafferty reported, Inevitably, this fine play, which ranged from Simpson right through to the strikers, brought another goal. A corner kick, one of many, was taken on the right. Lennox's shot was blocked, but Chalmers, alert as usual, got the ball into the net at the second attempt. In the 53rd minute, Tommy Gemmell scored his third goal of the tie from the penalty spot, thundering the ball home in classic style after Bobby Lennox was hauled down from behind as he raced in on goal. For the remainder of the match, the Swiss crowd were treated to an exhibition by Celtic, Rafferty writing, Latterly, when Celtic were on top, such was their virtuosity and entertainment value that one thought of the Harlem Globetrotters. 
the more restrained Glasgow Herald special correspondent reported. Throughout the second half, the crowd applauded the consistently fine play of Celtic and jeered at the inept football of their own team. Celtic were only into the second round and Zurich were far from a top-class side. No one was yet predicting that Celtic would conquer Europe, but maybe the first signs were emerging that they could be on the verge of something special. John Rafferty noted, This was a great Celtic team and nobody in Europe will be happy about meeting them now.